My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate, as I said at the beginning of Mass, not only the first uh, Saturday of the month of October, which is the month of the Holy Rosary, but we have the grace of uh, celebrating the feast of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary on this day as well. Did you notice that the opening prayer of the Mass sounded familiar? Did anybody catch that? It's the same exact prayer that we pray generally at least, well, we pray it three times a day if we faithfully pray the Angelus. It's the same prayer that comes in the middle of the Angelus prayer. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, etc. Just as with the Angelus, which is a practice that was introduced into the, into the church as a way of reminding the faithful three times a day of the grace of the incarnation which came to us through the Blessed Virgin Mary and is a, a means of consecrating the day to her that we might live it more faithfully and be worthy of the promises of Christ. The Holy Rosary was given by Our Lady to the church, to the people of Christ, as a means of forming us into holy disciples of Jesus. Pope St. John Paul II frequently exhorted us to get to know Jesus, to learn how to, to be like him, to, but above all to love him, because that's easier to do than to be like him, but we strive at the school of Mary, she who studied Jesus from the moment of his conception and ever since the greatest disciple. And the rosary, as Pope St. John Paul II told us, is a school. It's, it's the compendium of the gospel and the life of Christ, all these mysteries that we meditate upon. There is a history then to this particular feast day, which also demonstrates or reminds us of the great power of the rosary. You know, as I said, Our Lady gave the rosary to the Christian people for a purpose that will continue until the end of time, as each generation uh, is reconnected to God as that bond between man and his creator is strengthened through prayer, through knowledge of Christ, and the rosary is a, an aid to that religion that saves us. It also is an effective and efficacious uh, prayer of intercession where we ask for graces that we need, uh, first of all, moral graces above all, because in the end, what matters is our salvation, and that all comes down to being conformed to the mind and heart of Christ to unite our wills to the will of God. And the rosary is a, is a great tool to help us do that because with Mary, we contemplate Christ. With Mary, we go to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And she, through the means of this prayer, which is a response to her invitation to come to Jesus with her assistance, great gifts have been given to, to people ever since it was first introduced. First she gave the rosary to Saint Dominic as a means of converting the hearts of the people who had turned away from God and were practicing a, a dangerous uh, cult or a sect called Albigensianism, the Albigenses, uh, were fallen into error and leading souls away from, from salvation. And so the rosary was the means by which Dominic then was able, 
through that prayer and through his preaching to put an end to that heresy. It was also the means by which an astounding victory was given to the church at a time when uh, Christendom was threatened by the Ottoman Empire, the Turks, who had grown very powerful and wanted to conquer Europe and Christendom. And they had won many, many battles, and things were looking very bleak for the forces of Christendom. And this is in the uh, early 16th century. Then the Pope, at the time Pius V, urged all of the leaders of Christendom and all of the people to unite in an effort to protect Europe from an invasion that surely would have been not only uh, bloody and, and painful, but also would have attempted to snuff out the light of Christ, the light of faith. And so he urged everyone to pray the rosary and this huge armada of, of the Ottoman naval forces that had amassed and come to uh, the Adriatic to attack at uh, Venice, where, where the, Christen, the, the, uh, the fleet of the Christian forces was gathered at that battle, where they were greatly outnumbered, a, mir a miracle took place. And uh, witnesses, first of all, every, before the battle, all of the troops who were going into battle prayed a rosary. And then during the battle, there were 300 Ottoman ships against a much smaller number. I don't know the exact number of the Christian, ship, Christian ships, but something took place which is unexplainable except for the presence of Mary and her intercession. She was seen in the sky by both Christ, Christians and the Ottomans. And the Ottomans began to fire on each other. And so basically, it was like that story in the battle where Gideon and his small army went against a much greater army that was going to defeat them, but God did the fighting for them. And so Mary, in response to these prayers, the appeal of the Christian people saved them from disaster. There have been many other cases uh, of this happening, even in more recent times. The same similar thing happened in, in Vienna, uh, a little over a century after the battle at Lepanto, which I just described to you. And then in our time, well, I say our time, but uh, in the last century. Well, you, let, me, let me back up. During the French Revolution, which was one of the most violent attacks on, on the church and on the Catholic people since the beginning of the Catholic Church, or at least since the Roman times, it was an attempt to uh, destroy the faith not just the people, but the faith, because uh, those who were leading the French Revolution wanted to establish an atheistic state. And there was a very strong group of Catholics uh, called the Vendée, or Vendée, I, I, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it correctly, but I just learned this recently, that at, over the course of the war, which endured for a few years, half a million of these Vendée Christians were, Catholics, were killed. We don't hear anything about that, a half a million. And they fought bravely in their little ragtag army against the forces of Napoleon. And Napoleon himself said, had they persevered, they would have defeated the, the imperial army of Napoleon. The fact is that 
they did stop fighting at a certain point, and and then the revolution, you know, took took hold. But to this day, the Catholic faith still survives in France, and uh, there are those who who defend the faith after several centuries of a very hostile, uh, atheistic, secularist government there. And there's a prophecy that says, uh, from France, uh, the faith will arise again under the leadership of a king, a monarch. That may or may not happen, but the fact is that the faith is still alive despite this great oppression. And very recently, even, uh, there are people still are turning back to Mary and to the promises of the rosary. Uh, the Soviet army in the late 50s was repelled from its occupation. I believe the country was Czechoslovakia, if I'm not mistaken, or it was Hungary. It was one of those two nations uh, that was occupied by the Soviets and was going to become a Soviet satellite and led by a, uh, I believe it was a Franciscan priest, the nation began a, a rosary crusade, a rally, and it went on for several years. And then inexplicably, inexplicably and without any announcement, the Soviets just pulled up stakes and left the country without any violence. So that's a, a very recent victory obtained through the rosary. There's a very moving uh, image and a continuing movement in Poland beginning when the Russians invaded Ukraine, which is right on the border of Poland. The men by the hundreds gathered in the streets of Warsaw on their knees to pray the rosary. That image was published, uh, I saw it in an article on LifeSite News. Remarkable to see hundreds of men on their knees praying so they know the power of the rosary. They know the power of the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And Pope, St. Pope John Paul II also uh, tied the mission of the church in the new millennium to devotion to the rosary, this going to the school of Mary to study the face of Christ as a means of realizing the new evangelization that has to take place in a world that's become dominantly secularized, meaning without reference to Christ. So brothers and sisters, this uh, month has been designated also the Respect Life Month a month in which we renew our prayers, especially through Mary, for an end to the culture of death, and in particular to the end of abortion and its foundation, which is contraception, artificial contraception. We ask Mary, who won all these victories and who promises to lead us to Christ and does that for us, and is able to receive our meager offering of prayer. Sometimes we're distracted, sometimes uh, half asleep. Not that we should pray that way, but even if that's all we can muster at times, Mary can take that prayer and turn it into a, a powerful uh, river of grace for us to be more faithful to the will of God to bring about the miracles, the moral miracles, as well as the material miracles that we need. We ask Mary, Queen of the Holy Rosary, to intercede powerfully for us now to take the prayers of those who are faithful to her and to the devotion of the rosary and multiply them and spread that devotion and to save mankind from the culture of death. She will do it. We have to only be responsive to her 
urgings. She constantly asks us to pray the rosary daily, and she has shown that when we do so, she obtains results and saves souls. Mary, Queen of the Holy Rosary, pray for us.